Hey, what's up, y'all? Just wanted to uh, do a quick video here and um, talk about some stuff that's been going on recently in the uh, in the news, in the um, in the blogosphere, uh, online, you know, YouTube, in, in the podcast arena. And I think it's I think it's important for Christians to pay attention to some of this stuff a little bit because we are arbiters of truth, and we need to we need to not punch back at the evil in our world, at the craziness in our society, by being equally as divisive or uh, uh, or untruthful. And so what I'm talking about here is recently on a, on a podcast with uh, Tucker Carlson, if you know who that is, um, but he's, you know, was a very, very prominent voice on Fox News um, and, uh, you know, they fired him probably because of his opinions and stuff that, you know, a lot of his stuff was great, legit. And I actually like his, uh, his podcast and his content, you know, by and large, but I don't think anybody's right on everything all the time. And he had somebody on his podcast that I, I listened to, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, I guess it was. And Guy's name is Daryl Cooper. He is kind of a like an amateur like historian. He, as far as I know, he's into history and stuff. Does a lot of reading and, and stuff, but he's not like you know published. He hasn't. I don't know if he has any like books out on history or anything like that. So to say he's like a historian, I don't think is really accurate. But again, I'm not a historian, but I've read a lot, uh, uh, listened to a lot of books, looked into things. And so there's things about history that I, I know based on things that I don't have to be a historian. I don't have to have like credentials. I don't have to have a PhD in something to be able to discuss that. I don't think Daryl Cooper needs that either. However, on the podcast, he said, he, he did first say he was exaggerating a little bit. He's being a little hyperbolic, right? It's hyperbole. It's, um, and all this, but then he did spend some quite a bit of time talking about how uh, Winston Churchill was like the chief villain, I think is what he said, of World War II, and he again couched that in sort of like I I'm not, you know, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I'm, you know, going, you know, going out there and being a little intense about this, but I, I mean, when you look at what the Germans did, what the uh, what the Italians under Mussolini, you know, the Japanese, um, later Stalin, to say that is a little strong. And I think even with exaggeration, hyperbole, metaphor, whatever you want to call it, I don't think that's very smart. Uh, was Winston Churchill somehow perfect or anything like that? Absolutely not. But I think when you say things and do things that are just plain outrageous, based on my understanding of the facts. My understanding is that, because the, here's, the, here's what he presented. He basically said that there were some things in Churchill's life, you know, he was kind of disgraced with the World War I stuff. He uh, was, you know, sort of an alcoholic, which that might be true. Um, and then he, he got financed by like kind of Zionist elements that my understanding again is that there, historically there's not a strong connection there and that to make the case that he pushed the war, is you got to have some kind of strong evidence. I mean, at least mediocre evidence. The evidence he sort of presented was, well, Hitler came out with some of these peace offers, and so and, and they were rejected by Churchill, and therefore Churchill must have just wanted the war. It, it, it's kind of a, a lot of the strength of the argument. I think that's ridiculous. You have to... You have to basically say Hitler was honest about his peace overtures. Well, we know that he did that before, right? I mean, the whole thing with like Neville Chamberlain was that Hitler promised some things, right? I think it was what not not to invade Poland, and Neville Chamberlain is a is a dupe and a sap and all this stuff because he believed him, uh, and then Hitler goes and invades Poland. Uh, why would we now believe that? He's not going to invade other places just because he said, "Oh no, it's it's all cool now. I'm good. I'm, I've conquered enough now. I'm ready. I'm ready to just you know lay up my arms and and you know do the work of peace now." Where is the evidence of this? I mean, come on. 
Uh, am I saying that's impossible that's true? No. I'm saying that kind of thing needs to be op it needs to be debated it needs to be talked about he needs to go on with somebody that is equally versed in the history and discuss that back and forth so we can have point counterpoint i don't mean a formal debate necessarily where you're just trying to get the other person but even a discussion where it's like you're getting pressed on your views i don't think tucker did a very good job of that i think he allowed um this guy to just kind of say this stuff and i i listened to Another podcast by Daryl Cooper that I was extremely revealing and very good, but I know a lot of that history myself about the horrible things that Stalin and the Soviets did um, uh, in, the, in the USSR. But again, I, when you're coming out with evidence that, uh, where is this coming from? You should have like some pushback. You should have some good, solid questions like, what about this? Are you sure about that? And Tucker really didn't do that. And I think it's because we're in a moment right now where people are like so questioning the people in power because they have let us down time and time again, right? You name the institution and it's it, it's messed up, okay? You name the institution, it's messed up. Um, you, you take the uh, Congress, messed up. The executive branch, messed up. The media, oh my gosh, are you serious? I don't know if you could ever really have, have trust the media. People think, oh, well, back in the days of Walter Cronkite. I'm sorry, Walter Cronkite was as much of a shill uh, as many other people. You can go back and look at Operation Mockingbird and, and look that up and look what it is. And yeah, uh, the, the government has been in cahoots with the media for a very, very, very long time. Uh, education, messed up. Totally messed up. Uh, but from the inception of public school education ha has been a formal indoctrination basically <laughs> i mean again go look up some of the stuff john dewey and people like that way back in the day were saying about the you know public schools and getting in there and you know driving cultural change and all this stuff i just again i think it's a time when we we can't trust our cultural institutions and i would make the argument that that's because they have moved away from uh, the standard of truth, which should be the Bible and Christ and God. And this this is what our standard of truth should be. And when you move away from that, well, is it any wonder that things um, rot and decay? I think not. But we should not let those things rot and decay to the point to where we are now, anytime anyone is contrarian and goes against the, the, the liberal woke narrative, that, well, that must be true then. And so... Churchill must be the bad guy. Let's put the brakes on that. I don't think so. I am not saying everything that he said about that must be false then. Uh, no, I believe that in any case like World War II, to say there's good guys and bad guys, I would say there's, uh, there's bad guys and better guys. And some of them might be the best guys. Uh, you're, you're working with a mess. And you have to make decisions that are very, they're every decision on the, on the plate. There's five decisions. Every one of them is awful. And a decision has to be made. What are you going to do? Well, guess what? People that are living comfortably 60 and 70 years later are going to be able to pick apart all your decisions. And this it should have went this way. It should have went that way. They have no idea if that would have made it even worse. They have no idea. So they need, these things need to be debated. We shouldn't put heroes on a pedestal and they're, they're beyond question. You can't question Abraham Lincoln. You can't question George Washington. You can't look at Churchill and say, hey, there, there were some things in his life that were not that great. There were some decisions that may not have been that good. But you know what? He was a man of the times. Uh, you should be able to do that. You should be able to do that. So honest history, honest questions, honest pursuit of truth is what we as Christians need to do. That means, no, there's not questions we shouldn't be able to ask. But we also shouldn't just jump on something because it, go against, it goes against the, 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 the establishment that is currently in power that is awful and has many elements that are at best egregious and at worst totally evil. So as Christians, let's be honest purveyors of truth. Let's be honest when we got something wrong. Let's be honest when we say, hey, you know what? I was wrong there. Let's move on. Let's let's get it right and, and, and do right going forward. So again, I hope this has helped you thinking about things, thinking about questions, thinking about the pursuit of truth. Let's pursue truth because ultimately that puts us in the in the field where we were going to be, be pursuing Christ 
and the Word of God, because that is ultimate truth. Love y'all. God bless you. Let me know if you like this in the comments, if you've heard about this, if you've had any questions about this, uh, or if you have not heard about this at all, and I gave you a little bit of, you know, some history, some lessons, some cultural stuff going on, any way, shape, or form, shoot me a comment, and uh, I'll try to look at those and interact. Love y'all. God bless you. Hope this has been helpful, and we'll talk soon.